Section 3.8, binomial probability. This is also known as a Bernoulli trial, which we'll, you'll see how that's spelled in the next slide. So, as it says there many times in life, there are only two options. Either that you watch a TV show or you don't. They, you smoke or you don't. A machine works or it doesn't. In these scenarios where there's only two options, and there's three other um, requirements, you have this magical thing called a binomial probability. Now, if you are going on to stats, you'll definitely be seeing binomial, uh, again, along with normal distributions, if you remember that from sections 3, 9, and 3, 10. So uh, they're going to go into much more detail, but we're going to be able to do a lot of problems just with our information from this class. Let's first go over the four things that are necessary for a binomial probability, also known as a Bernoulli trial. So this Bernoulli guy, uh, like I had mentioned in a previous video, he did a lot of stuff with Bernoulli tri uh, with this concept of binomial probability. Uh, we credited him the concept of binomial probability, and we also continue to use his notation. Uh, so if you remember, for combinations, you can have large parentheses with an N over R. That's him. But again, if you don't want to use that, if you just want to use the capital C with the N comma R, totally fine. But these four scenarios are very important uh, to make up a Bernoulli trial. And they are, the same experiment must be repeated several times. There are only two possible outcomes. And we call those possible outcomes success and failure. The repeated trials are independent, meaning uh, the result of one experiment does not affect another experiment. And the probability from each outcome remains the same for each trial. All four of those together are required for a Bernoulli trial. If any one of those are missing, you no longer have a Bernoulli trial. You might have a probability that deals with a permutation or combination or just regular old counting. So all four of these must be present in order to have a Bernoulli trial. If you need to, pause the video to make sure that you've got all of them down. Otherwise, as we said, or as I said, uh, Royal We apparently, there are only two possible outcomes, success and failure. We use P for the probability of success. And since there's only two options, the probability for success plus the probability for failure must equal 100% or one. So if we call P the probability of success, then one minus P is the probability of failure. Now, comment. Don't get caught up on semantics here. If, for instance, uh, P or you, uh, success is declared to be uh, finding a person who smokes and you're vehemently against smoking, as you should be, because uh, it means that you have less time in life to do mathematics, and that's why you shouldn't smoke, no other reason, then you can't be like, well, I don't consider smoking a success. Well, we can't think that way. If it's declared to be a success, then for the purpose of the problem, it's a success. Uh, so don't please put uh, personal emotion into these problems and how you define success or failure. Um, okay, with that said, please watch Intro to Probability, uh, Intro to Binomial Probability. Now as a comment, keywords Intro to, because it's in Intro to, uh, we are developing a formula for binomial probability. You see the formula in action right after this video. Um, so the way the process was done in this next video is not how it's going to be done when you get the formula. Remember, this is what we did with compound interest way back when, when you're all young and adorable. We use simple interest to predict compound interest. Same concept here. So once we have the formula, we'll only be using the formula. Okay, go please watch uh, Intro to Binomial Probability.